This video is going to take you through how what we call a mono hybrid cross, mono standing for one trait. Um, and so now we're going to do a dihybrid cross. So a dihybrid cross helps us to predict the inheritance of two traits at the same time. So what's the likelihood of having um, brown hair and brown eyes, things like that, at the same time? We solve a dihybrid in three steps. The first step is setting up our Punnett square. The second step is filling it in. And then the third step is determining ratios and percentages. So I'm going to break the next example that we do down into the same category. So on your note sheet, you'll also see a space for you to write this exact example and the Punnett square that um, I show you here. So for our example, we are going to use two pea plants that are heterozygous for seed shape and seed color. So green seed color is dominant to yellow and round seed shape is dominant to wrinkled seed shape. So we're going to use um, R for the seed shape and G for the seed color. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to do is foil the parent genotypes. So I told you we had two parents that are heterozygous for both genotypes. So we start off by writing out what mom and dad are. Um, they're the same exact thing, so that's going to save us a lot of legwork in this particular example. So they are both heterozygous for seed shape, round, and heterozygous for seed color, green. So it would be big R, little r, big G, little g for both mom and dad plants. So we're going to FOIL this just like you do in math, just like you do in algebra. FOIL standing for first, outside, inside, last, or first, outer, inner, last, um, however you were, you were taught it. So we're going to divide, we're going to take one parent at a time and divide up their alleles based on what trait they go with. So we're going to put the R's in parentheses over here and the G's in parentheses over here. Now we're going to apply what we know from FOIL. So we're going to take the first two terms, which would be a big R and a big G. So that's first. And just write those together for now. Then we're going to take the outside terms, which is a big R and a little g on the outsides of the parentheses. Okay, then we're going to take the inside terms, which are a little r and a big G. And then we're going to take the last two terms in each set of parentheses being a little r and a little g. So <clears throat> we do this because you get one copy of each uh, allele from each parent. So mom's going to be divided up and each one of these is going to represent one of the egg cells that her body would or this pea plant would create. Um, and so we would do the same for the dad. But we're going to cut out doing all the foil again because dad's the exact same genotype as the mom. If dad were different, we would have to do foil all over again just for dad. Now we're going to take each of these groups of letters and put them on the side of the Punnett square. And this time we're using a 16 square Punnett square. So it's double the size. Um, it's got two more columns and two more rows than the uh, four square that we've been using. So this is what your square would look like. It is important to remember that you will only have two letters over each box. Now don't get this confused with your monohybrids. Your monohybrids, you're only ever going to have one letter over each box because you're just doing one trait. Your dihybrids are always going to have two letters over each box. Okay. So now we need to fill in the Punnett square. So fill in the Punnett square, we have to follow a couple of rules. The first rule is keep the same letters together. That means don't write R, G, R, G, or G, R, G, R. Keep the R's together and the G's together. Just like in math, when you do like terms, you have to keep the R's together and the G's together. You also write the capital letter of the combination in the front. 
that helps you to remember that there's a dominant there. It's, it's a helpful trick, um, just a, something simple to remember when you're filling it in, but it makes a big difference when you start to analyze all 16 of your squares in your Punnett square. So always write the capital letter of the combination in the front. So big R, little r, big G, little g. And, he, and again, just work one square at a time, just like a four square Punnett square. Do not try to do multiple at a time, you'll get confused. So here I filled in part of the square for you. We bring the big R down from the top, the big R in from the side, big G down from the top, big G in from the side, big R down from the top, big R in from the side, big G in from the side, big little g down from the top. Continue that all the way until you have completed this entire Punnett square. So I'm going to give you a second here to try to complete the rest of the square um, before I give you all of the answers. Okay, so your completed Punnett square should look a little something like this. Uh, it should look exactly like this. So I would take a second, um, pause the video, and check over all of your answers to be sure that you, one, have them written correctly, and two, that you have all the correct combinations in your boxes. All right, our third step is determining the phenotypes of the offspring. So we've determined their genotypes by doing our Punnett square. Now we need to determine their probable physical appearances. So um, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to create a key just like you would on a graph and color your Punnett square or otherwise indicate on your Punnett square your different um, phenotypes because because there will be four different probable phenotypes so let's list the four out you could have a plant that is round with green seeds you could have a plant that is round with yellow seeds or wrinkled with green seeds or wrinkled with yellow seeds so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to assign a color to each one of the phenotypes um, in my Punnett square. If you don't want to use colors, you could use symbols like stars, hearts, as long as you're clear and you know what each different part, each different phenotype is. So I'll use the color yellow for round seed, round green, the color green for round yellow, the color red for wrinkled green, and the color blue for wrinkled yellow seeds. So now I'm just going to fill in my Punnett square. So you go through and you see round green G anywhere in it. So if it has at least one big R and one big G, I'm going to color the box yellow. Round and yellow is going to be at least one big R, but it has to have two little G's. Wrinkled and green is going to be uh, two little R's but a big G somewhere in the genotype. And then wrinkled yellow is going to be all recessive for the whole thing. So two little R's, two little G's. So I just went through and filled in my different colors. So this one has a big R and a big G. It must be yellow. This one has a big R and two little G's. It must be green. And this one has two little R's and two big G's. So it has to be red. So I'll give you another second to work through coloring the rest of that one. And your final Punnett square should look like this. So this is where it's easy to see your pattern. Um, you do have a pattern of inheritance here that you can see in your dihybrid cross. So now, let's move on 
to actually figuring out the numbers. So this is a key to help us figure out the numbers. So let's actually do the, do the counting. So now we are going to count the amount of each color that we have. And we're going to list out our four genotypes again. And we're going to pull in our Punnett square, our dye hybrid over here. And you're going to just count the color. Um, so you have nine that are yellow, three that are green, three that are red, and one that is blue. So I'll give you a quick tip and piece of advice when you do dye hybrids or when you observe a dye hybrid. Any time that mom and dad are heterozygous for both traits, okay, so big letter, little letter, big letter, little letter, for both traits in both parents, you will all nine to three to three to one. Okay, that saves you a whole lot of legwork if you can remember nine to three to three to one. You don't even have to do the Punnett square if you see that mom is heterozygous for both, dad is heterozygous for both, boom, you know what your phenotype would be.